Late February, speaking at the United Nations General Assembly Hall, you urged the international community to use any means necessary to restore diplomacy to Myanmar. What actions do you want to see taken, Ambassador? You know, in that, uh, on the day on 26th of February at the uh, UN General Assembly, that, that is the informal meeting, of course. Uh, but I'd like to convey the voices of the people of Myanmar to the international community. So that is why in my statement, I clearly uh, uh, appealed the international community to extend their support uh, towards the people of Myanmar for our fight against the military regime. So in that uh, statement also, I appealed the member states of the United Nations and the UN to, uh, to condemn strongly the military coup, not to recognize the military regime, to release the unconditionally and immediately the 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 Do Aung San Suu Kyi, our leader Do Aung San Suu Kyi, President U Win Min, and and lawful detainees, and also ask uh, for the help to restore the de democracy in Myanmar, and then also I ask for the you know uh, the 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 uh, to, to support our efforts for the building a democratic, democratic federal union. I also ask the international community to support CRPH. So that's sort of a appeal that I made during my, my, my statement. Thank you. And shortly after that statement, you were fired by the military leadership in Myanmar. You obviously haven't stepped down. So what exactly do you hope to play when it comes to a role going forward? Yeah, so it is expected. Uh, so it's a we, after the statement, there will be some action from the, uh, from the military. So, so they, they, they dismiss me. But I, I'm, I'm, since the beginning, I'm already decided. Uh, I, I, will, I, will, I will fight back the military regime as long as I can and until the end of military coup. This is my, 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 my resolution. This is my desire. Uh, for the people of Myanmar. So I will continue to do it I, as a permanent representative of Myanmar here in New, New York. So. Is that a view shared by the rest of the diplomatic community here in, here in New York at the mission? Um, the decision that I made, uh, just nobody knows, of course, I made it by myself. So I, I, uh, they, they knew it once I delivered the statement. So that, that's sort of the, you know, uh, the ex experience that I went through uh, 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 on, on 26th of February. And was there much upheaval here at the Myanmar mission for the United Nations after you gave that address? Obviously, there was a little bit of uncertainty uh, whether it be yourself or your deputy that would then take on the role of ambassador going forward. Yeah. So, of course, you know, right after the statement, so I came back to the mission, and of course, all my colleagues, uh, they they uh, they applaud me, and you know, they appreciate me the way that that, that the way that I, I I did. But at the same time, you know, because uh, we. The, the, we were, of course, everybody have the concern with regard to ourselves, with regard to our family members back home. So uh, we have the support on the, you know, the, the, our, uh, our democratic movement in Myanmar. Uh, the, uh, the, we, we, uh, we also, you know, peop all, all of us, the people of Myanmar, we don't like the military coup. We want, the, uh, we want to end the military coup as quick as possible, as soon as possible. This is the desire of all the people. But the degree may differ from, uh, from one to another. That's, we need to respect it because it's, uh, uh, we, we believe in freedom of expression and freedom of belief. So, so that, that is, you know, we, 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 we really want to respect each other. So respect their, their, their decision, respect their, their, their position. So, so that, that is why, you know, the way that I did, maybe some, some maybe think that it's very extreme, but that what I think is that it is the right time and right, right moment to do it for the, for the country and for the people of Myanmar. Are you in any dialogue with the military now? No, I don't. What about other officials, any other channels in Myanmar for you to help play 
a constructive role here at the United Nations to move things forward in the hope to find a peaceful resolution to the crisis. Yeah, thank you so much. I, of course, I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm working closely with the, uh, the CRPH uh, and committee representing the Piran Zulato and the, uh, the SAM members uh, are from the, uh, the NLD. That is what I, I'm working closely with. Uh, so that's the way I, I believe that we can find the solution. Uh, but, you know, uh, this is also depending on the how, how the military will behave. So because we, we, we want that, that things will be resolved in an amicable and peaceful manner. But so, you know, as you know, the people, many, many innocent civilians being killed, uh, uh, many innocent civilians being beaten, so arrested. So that's our situation that we are, we, are, we are facing. So we want to overcome this kind of situation. We, we need to find a way. But uh, how, how to find a way is uh, you know, uh, the question mark. Of course, we, 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 we need to, uh, to, uh, to get the help from the international community. That is, we always mention that, you know, because of the situation, because of the circumstances that we are facing, we really need the protection from the international community. That is what we like to stress, you know, in addition to what I, I uh, made my, what, uh, in addition to the appeal that I made in the, in, on the 26th of February at the General Assembly, we need to have the protection from the international community. What the international community can do going forward, I, I want to get into. But first of all, do you face any personal concerns or for your family members still in Myanmar since you became such an inter internationally recognised figure after that speech that you gave at the General Assembly Hall in, in late February? Yeah, thank you. Of course, I have the concern because I put my parents, uh, my family members, at risk, of course, I have a lot of concern on them. But uh, uh, and after I delivered the statement, I got the feedback from my parents. They said they are uh, they uh, they are uh, uh, proud of me, so I'm feel happy. So, but uh, anyway, of course, I have uh, I'm, I worry about them, and I I I have concern on them. And in your mind, what's a best case scenario to find a peaceful resolution to this crisis? You know. The, the best solution will be the military should end the military coup. That they, they, they immediately release the, uh, the, the Don San Suu Kyi, President Wu Wenmin, and all, all unlawful detainees. Stop brutality. That sort of action be given by the military will make things move forward. Otherwise, it will be difficult. You know, look at the, 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 the sentiment and the perception of people. It's already very negative to what the, uh, uh, to what the military because of their brutal act on the people of Myanmar. And we've recently heard from the United Nations Security Council in a statement condemning the violence in Myanmar, urging the military to show restraint. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, then uh, I, I, uh, I thank the members of the Security Council, you know, because this is the presidential statement. Uh, the presidential sh statement can be issued only with the consensus uh, by the member state. So all the member state has the veto power <laughs> uh, uh, to agree with the, uh, the, the statement. So that is why in that sense, I thank the members, uh, members of the Security Council. At the same time, I, I, because, you know, the, the elements contain in the presidential statement is, doesn't meet our expectation. So we really like to have the stronger statement from the, uh, uh, the Security Council and the stronger action from the Security Council. That is the people of Myanmar really want. So it's a very con uh, the, connect to the, you know, what I said, we need the protection from the international community. And you're calling for stronger statements, but what can multilateral diplomacy do in resolving this crisis? Thank you so much. Because, you know, at, uh, you may recall that, you know, yesterday, the special reporter on the human rights situation in Myanmar, Mr. Uh, Thomas Indus, also, you know, made the same proposal with regard to the, you know, coalition uh, to target the sanction against, against the, uh, the military regime. So this sort of thing is quite encouraging. You know, if, 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 if 
there cannot be any resolution can, uh, come out from the uh, UN Security Council, but there are the way that you know, like-minded group, like like-minded countries, can create this kind of coalition to cut the uh, the financial flow, to make the you know the, the 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 business of the military to 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 stop. So that sort of you know situation, that sort of you know, measures will, will will help to make the military regime in a difficult po uh, difficult position. So that 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 we we the member state need to look at in that uh, that proposal whether if if it, it can work quickly and strongly, then it will be good. So that that sort of measure. This is uh, one of the tools. So it's uh, there were there should be the other tools uh, to put pressure on the, uh, on the military regime to return the state power to the people of Myanmar. Well, speaking of tools, according to the Reuters news agency, looking at one of the initial drafts of that council statement, um, it's reported that several nations, including Russia and China, of course, veto-wielding members of the Security Council, made amendments to that council statement, dropping language condemning the coup, as well as dropping language that would call for considering further measures. With that being dropped, does that essentially, in your mind, rule out the possibility that the UN Security Council has the appetite as a collective to go forward with sanctions in the future? Yeah, that, that is fine that I stress that, you know, because uh, in my appeal to the, uh, the member state of the UN, I really like to see the you know, elements that like uh, condemning the, the, uh, the military coup but uh, I respect the, you know, the positions and the stance of the member states of the UN, in particular member state of the Security Council in this regard, they, they, because they, they have their position, they have they their own stand, so we need to respect them. But so if we cannot get anything that strong, stronger possible uh, actions from the Security Council, we have to look for the other possible way to get that kind of you know, uh, action against the, uh, the military regime, against the military regime to return the state power to the, uh, to the people. So that, that is why the like-minded group, like-minded countries will come out together and cut the financial flow fr from the, uh, to the military regime, to their businesses, to their, uh, their, uh, their children's uh, businesses. So that sort of uh, action will be needed immediately. Over 130 non-profits have penned a letter to the UN calling for an arms embargo. Is that one of those avenues that could potentially be used going forward to try and stem the violence scene in Myanmar? Yeah, that, you know, I, we, I personally, I welcome any sort of measures coming from a, a member state or uh, member states will be very helpful for our efforts to end the military coup in Myanmar. We've heard from the UN Special Envoy to Myanmar, Christine Shrana Bergener, who's called for unified action and how essential that was. That being considered, how crucial and how pivotal a role can China play going forward? Yeah, of course, China is our neighboring country, our, uh, our friendly nation. But at the same time, you know, look at the, the perception, sentiment of the people towards the China, especially at this uh, situation, people uh, think that you know China is helping military regime. So that sort of thing that, that the people see China in that way. Uh, so, but China. So you may listen to the you know the the statement made by the uh, uh, minister, foreign minister, uh, Mr. Wang Yi. Uh, with, so they express their position with regard to to Myanmar. Definitely, no countries in the world want to see the you know, instability in Myanmar, especially our neighboring countries. That we appreciate it, but at the same time, we really need to have the sort of stronger action from the member states, uh, 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 I mean, especially neighboring countries uh, 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 against the military regime, because I always trust that you know, people of Myanmar, innocent civilians of Myanmar, feel helpless. So one is scammed helpless, we really need to get the, uh, the, uh, the support and we really uh, need to get the assistance to protect the people of Myanmar. That's the way I like to stress. 
to nations that say this is an internal matter, what do you say to them? You know, again, it's, it's back to the, you know, this thing happened in the, the country, but there are the, you know, the implication uh, to, to countries, especially in the uh, country in the region. So when I, we are talking about a, a, a group of people who with M's, who with GANs, and then a people, civilian, innocent civilians, who have nothing, I mean, no GANs, no M's. So this kind of situation that we are facing. So that is why I stress that we really need to have the protection. So, so also we are talking about, you know, people like to, 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 to have the pre, pre, prevailing of justice. Now there is injustice and the justice. So when this kind of situation that we are facing, so people with no guns, people with no arms, we always have the, you know, the casualty will be on them. So that kind of situation that we want to avoid, we don't want to lose any, any more of civilian, I mean, especially young people. You look at uh, those who killed during the protests, they are, they are the young people. So we, they, those young people, they are our future. The young generation, they are our future. So we need to protect them. So one, we need to protect them. If we cannot do by ourselves, we need to get the, uh, the help from the international community. That is what I like to you know, stress that.